Well friends, I'm excited to share with you my really positive home birth story with you guys today. So this is our third child we have and I will introduce them to you later. But my first two births were hospital births. One was an induction and one was a natural hospital birth. So every birth I have had has been completely different than the one in the past. So I'm going to just share with you from beginning to end my story. And if you're interested in the other two, I will put them in the description box for you to listen to those if you're curious about how I had my two little girls. But let's just start from the beginning. So it was a Wednesday evening, we were eating supper and I got up from the chair and I thought I felt my shorts wet and so I wasn't exactly sure what was going on because I was eight days late at that point. So my due date was May 16, but I went over one week with my first and was induced and 11 days over with my second. So I was already eight days late and I was really anxious because I was thinking this one was going to be closer to the due date. But obviously already over a week overdue. So um, I wasn't sure what to think about it because then um, I had a few contractions that evening but not a whole lot and then through the night I definitely felt uh, more contractions happening like half hour to 40 minutes apart and then they stopped around 2 a.m. in the morning. So I got up the Thursday morning and Thursday the 25th, the due date, or not the due date, the day the baby was born. And I was like, all right, so not much has happened. I did my normal um, stretches and exercises, went outside for a bit and watered my garden and I got some more contractions started. So I texted my midwife at that point and was like, all right, so things didn't really happen much the night after my water had broke some, not a lot. So I had texted her all of that and let her know uh, that things I thought were probably going to be happening. And then um, just told her like, yeah, I'm having some contractions this morning. And so I started timing them. I took my girls on a little walk, like 15 minute walk. And when we got back, I had a gush if, um, you know, if you're queasy of things, this watching a birth story may not be the best for you. But anyways, I'm going to share details because this is what birth is. So I had about 9.45 when I got back. I felt a gush and I couldn't control it. And it was enough to go through a pad, a large pad. So I knew I was like, okay, this is more than just a controllable being. So that was something I messaged her. Like, all right, so that happened. And then we called, I called my midwife and I said, yeah, I think my water broke last night and some more today. So obviously it wasn't like a complete gush like you see in the movies. It didn't just all happen. So it was very gradual water breaking. And then I felt contractions pick up a little bit more, more like eight to 10 minutes apart. So I called my mom cause she lives two hours away to come watch the girls and told her, you better come today. Baby's probably coming today. And midwife was on her way down cause she was 45 minutes away. And so I was like, all right, I'll give you some time because once water breaks, you know, things usually pick up a little bit. Um, so we got rolling there and then when she got here, we had it, we were at our cottage. So that's where the birth was, our guest cottage, which was such a sweet space to have, just like a private oasis to have this baby. So we were over there and they said about it takes like one to four hours for contractions and things to really start picking up after your water breaks and so it did a little bit um they were when i timed them they were like five to six minutes apart and so um my husband and i would just go out for little walks i'd sit on the birthing ball they were nothing too intense where i had to stop and like pause to really breathe through them at that point so i just kept going with um what we were doing and having my contractions then and about at four they said all right so you wanted to break last night at supper time at six and that's usually about a 24 hour mark that they like to know you're gonna have a baby because infection can happen things like that with having the water broke and 
I'm not into having um, checks, like cervical checks, exams, things like that. I prefer not to if I don't have to. And so she did recommend checking to see if my water had completely broken because contractions should have been like a lot closer together and more intense than they were if my water had completely broken. So I did say, yes, let's do a check. So at about 4 p.m., she checked and I still had a line. There was still part of the bag that had not broken. So this happened with my second child with Nadia that my water broke just like a pin break at the top and it just never completely broke until they broke it and with my first. So I just, they said they just have really strong um, filaments that keep the water together and so they did end up breaking it the rest of the way so that I could continue labor. Otherwise I would have been in an active labor where I was like pausing to breathe every once in a while and I would have just gotten exhausted. So I just told her, yep, go ahead and finish breaking the water. So that is about four, I would say. And they had brought their water tub to fill up and put in the cottage. And so at that time they said, all right, we'll get that filled up because things will start to pick up. So they started filling up the water berth, or the water tub, and I started having more intense contractions as I was laying on the bed. Um, I wasn't walking around much at that point because things were starting to pick up a little bit. And so um, I then decided to get in the water tub after, oh, I'd say they really started to pick up after an hour. And so contraction, I really have to stop and focus and breathe through it. And I highly, highly recommend practicing breathing for labor. So I just did my Bradley method breathing. It's like breathe in for eight, out for eight. And thankfully, on top of all this, I had gotten a really bad cold over the weekend before, so four or five days before, and I couldn't even breathe then. So I was praying that my cold would go away and I'd be able to breathe through labor and not have um, birth too early so that I could actually breathe through delivery. So praise the Lord, I was on the mend at that point. I'm still a little congested if you can hear that and stuffed up. But, you know, when you deliver a baby, there's a lot of breathing involved, especially if you want to do it naturally and you want to get through it well. So that was something I really had a focus on and was just so blessed that I actually had a late baby because I would not have been able to deliver well if I was really sick. But anyways, so um, they were filling up the tub the water heater in the cottage was not big enough to completely fill the tub so they boiling pots on the stove and so after a while i'm like all right i need to get in the tub because i felt that that rectum pressure of i think i'm gonna have to push and so i really was only in the tub for about uh 20 minutes before baby came then so um, i never done a water birth and i had wanted to with the other two but it just alleviated a lot of the I was having some back lower back pain and some um, hip pain too, of course because it's labor, but some more back pain and that really alleviated a lot of that pain and pressure, and so it just felt like I could focus on my breathing through the contractions as they came closer and more intense, and then I felt the urge to push and I I knew it because my grunts change you get a little lower grunt and so I was like yep it's time so I was actually kind of laying on my side in the tub which is odd. And so first push um, came out, his head, the head came out just about to his nose and then they flipped me onto my rear, but when you're in the water you're kind of buoyant. So um, they opened up legs so they could get the baby because my husband was able to catch the little baby. And so after then the next push I felt like I just actually was a continual pushing. Um, I felt the ring of fire. There was one second of, I said, I want to get this out. So that does happen sometimes where we almost want to give up, but you just push through it. And uh, the shoulder did get stuck because he's this, this is a broad baby. So they just adjusted the shoulders just a little bit and the rest came out. And as soon as the baby came out, husband caught him and put him up on my chest. And I'm obviously sharing the gender of the baby right now because I keep <laughs> slipping it and put the towel over him. He was in the water with me and we didn't even check. Was it a girl? Was it a boy? 
and so we finally checked and we have a little boy so I just felt so blessed to be able to have labor and delivery in our cottage in a water bath and it was just such a wonderful experience to be able to do that at home and honestly like the rest and relaxation we got afterwards was so incredible no one coming in to check on you every four hours for a day um, no pinpricks on the baby because if you have over an eight pound baby in a hospital they check to see if they have gestational diabetes even if the mom didn't because um, he was uh, nine pounds six ounces 21 and a fourth inches long so it was just such a wonderful place to relax and rest and recover in our own little humble abode and with little baby husband and myself so there was such a positive birth and I would love to do that again if we have more children the water was so relaxing and alleviating even though I was only in it for 20 minutes it was it just helped relieve a lot of that pressure and just you know I can't say enough about how wonderful it was to be able to deliver in your own home with the comforts of your own space and so a lot of people I think with home births they're worried about like the mess of it all and um, not being close to a hospital or not having that intervention if you need it but if you just let the mama do what the mom's supposed to do and baby come things seem to go quite smoothly and so I was so thankful and grateful to have such a wonderful birth and delivery but let me grab our little one and introduce him to you so this is little Elias William Killian and weighed, like I said, nine pounds, six ounces. He is, was napping. 21 and a quarter inches long. And so a big guy, my girls were eight pounds, 15 ounces, eight pounds, 16 ounces. So I do have bigger babies, um, but just such a sweet blessing. A little boy, we had no idea. I felt like I carried the same through pregnancy. I was a little more sick at the beginning. The one inkling I had that maybe he was a boy was his heart rate was always around the 120, 125 range, which sometimes can indicate a boy. So what a sweet little blessing, little baby Elias that we have. And Elias means the Lord is our God, which I just love what that means. So. Anyways, that is my birth story, and I maybe missed something because when you're in labor, sometimes things kind of just slip past you, but um, still recovering. We are doing well. He's nursing well. Things are just going smoothly. Sisters are adjusting to having a, another sibling and a little brother, so I hope you enjoyed watching my home birth story and hearing about it, and yeah, just what a blessing to have another little one in our lives so have a blessed and wonderful day friends